Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Welcome sa ating Worship Leadership Ignition Guide, Video Session 5, Developing a Mentorship Journey. Ako si Ate Lisa, and today, we're diving into something very important. Mentorship. Alam naman natin na sa buhay, hindi tayo pwedeng mag-isa lang. We all need guidance, lalo na sa mga bagay na bago sa atin, whether it's in life, ministry, or career. Mentorship Benefits Unang punto, knowledge transfer. Kapag meron kang mentor, parang shortcut yan sa effectiveness mo. Bakit? Kasi may taong magbabahagi ng wisdom, experiences at skills na pinagdaanan na nila. Yung mga pagkakamali na sana gagawin mo, hindi na mangyayari kasi andyan na si mentor para gabayan ka. Parang relationship ni na Paul at Timothy, kung saan ipinasa ni Paul kay Timothy ang lahat ng nalaman niya sa leadership at spiritual growth. Next up, personal growth. Hindi lang naman ito tungkol sa kung anong alam mo, kundi kung sino ka bilang tao. Ang mentorship, parang meron kang accountability partner. Siya yung magbibigay ng constructive feedback, yung mga bagay na dapat pang i-improve, pero in a way na nakaka-encourage, hindi nakakababa ng self-esteem. And finally, spiritual and leadership development. Sa ministry settings, grabe ang impact ng mentorship. Imagine si Paul at Timothy ulit. Si Paul, hindi lang basta nagturo ng leadership. Tinulungan din niya si Timothy na palalimin ang kanyang relationship sa Lord at ipakita ang tamang leadership. The three mentorship approaches. Una, relational mentorship, life-on-life approach. Ito yung mentorship na nakatuon sa personal at authentic na relasyon. Kumbaga, may safe space para mag-share ng thoughts and struggles. Pangalawang approach, goal-oriented mentorship or the structured approach. Dito, focus tayo sa pag-set ng specific goals at pag-achieve nito. Kasama ni Mentor Cimenti sa pag-identify ng mga clear objectives, whether sa skill development, leadership growth, or spiritual maturity. Mag-create ng personal development plan, PDP, na may measurable milestones, at mag-schedule ng check-ins weekly or bi-weekly para magbigay ng feedback based sa progress. Last approach. Coaching and Empowerment or the Empowerment Approach Dito naman, ang role ni mentor ay more on guiding rather than giving direct answers. Hindi ka spoon-fed dito. You're empowered to solve problems and develop leadership skills independently. Kasama na rin dito ang paggamit ng HEAR tool para siguradong meaningful ang pag-engage sa heart. Engaging the heart. Using the HEAR tool. This framework, HEAR, Empathize, Assess, and Respond, is designed to create meaningful conversations between mentor and mentee, lalo na with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Unang step sa HEAR tool ay HEAR. Ang pinaka-importante dito ay active listening. Tanungin ang mentee ng mga thought-provoking questions tulad ng Ano ang mga challenges na hinaharap mo? O kamusta ang tingin mo sa progress mo? Pero bago ka pa magtanong, ask for the Holy Spirit's presence sa conversation para magkaroon ka ng discernment at mas magets mo ang sitwasyon. Next step, Empathize. Reflect back sa mga sinabi nila. Parang ganito. Nakikita ko kung bakit nakaka-frustrate ito para sa'yo. Third step ay assess. Dito, tutulungan mo ang mentee na mag-evaluate ng kanilang sitwasyon. Tanungin sila ng mga tanong na magpapaisip, like, ano ang pwede mong gawin para malampasan ang challenge na to? At ang last step, respond. Now it's time to offer resources and support based sa specific na pangangailangan ng mentee. Pwede kang mag-recommend ng books, workshops, or anything na makakatulong sa kanilang growth. Pero huwag mo kalimutan, encourage them to take ownership of their journey by asking, ano ang gusto mong i-focus ngayon? Ang key takeaway natin dito ay hindi lang basta advice ang binibigay. Pinapalakas mo rin ang loob ng mentee na maging responsible sa sarili nilang journey with the Holy Spirit guiding both of you. Mentoring Program Design Paano nga ba natin masisigurong epektibo ang ating mentorship program? Unang step, identify mentoring needs. Check mo muna kung anong skills or spiritual areas ang dapat i-develop, whether it's leadership, musical abilities, or spiritual growth. Next step, set clear goals for the mentorship. Dapat specific at measurable ang mga objectives. Halimbawa, kung ang goal ay makapag-perform ang mentees bilang choir para sa isang special event, a smart goal might be, mentees will perform during a worship service within six months. Mas madali mag-track ng progress kapag malinaw ang goals. Now, let's talk about content development. 
pwedeng 12 session voice or instrument training na may kasamang leadership lessons. Use different resources, tulad ng books, videos, or workshops. Tapos bigyan mo rin sila ng hands-on experience. Halimbawa, assign them during worship services or ministry tasks. Panghuli, implement evaluation methods. Maghold ng regular check-ins para makita kung paano na ba ang progress ng mentees. I-track kung gaano nila na-meet ang kanilang goals at sa dulo ng program, review their growth at magbigay ng feedback sa kanilang leadership and skills. Magbigay ako ng isang testimony at gagamitin ko itong isang case study. Ang context. Back in my church in Win Ortigas, we faced a major challenge. Our goal was to strengthen the worship team, not just in musical skill, but also in leadership. We also needed to multiply the number of worship teams dahil dumadami ang Sunday services namin. The problem? Kulang kami sa musicians at singers who could lead worship confidently. We really needed guidance in improving technical skills, and most of the team members were unsure about how to plan or lead worship services. Training program. We had to act fast, so the team launched a six-month mentorship program focusing on instruments and choir development. The mentorship aimed to improve vocal and instrumental skills, worship planning, and leadership potential. Every member was paired with a mentor for one-on-one sessions, plus we had group trainings, workshops, and actual worship practices. Results, after six months, sobrang laki ng improvement ng team. Mayroong leadership confidence. Yung mga dati ay takot o hesitant mag-lead ng worship na aming mga young members. Ngayon sila na mismo ang nagpa-plan at nagli-lead ng services. Mayroong skill development. The choir's vocal skills and musicianship significantly leveled up. Parang ibang team na ang gumagalaw sa worship. Mayroon ding team unity. Mas bonded kami, both spiritually and us even more. Ramdam talaga yung presence ni Lord sa mga services. You could feel the shift in the atmosphere, and on top of that, lumaki din ang bilang ng worship teams namin. We grew to 80 members, parang isang congregation na kami, thanks to the choir and the addition of the young leaders for youth worship service. Hindi ko sinasabi na ito lang ang paraan para mapalakas at maparami ang mga miyembro ng team. Sa dami ng mga members, dumami rin ang mga challenges at issues. Pero sa pamamagitan ng panalangin at intentional na pakikipag-engage, kaya nating malagpasan ang mga ito. Prayer for the Mentorship Journey, a Psalm 23 approach. Ngayon, bawat isa sa inyo, basahin ang isang linya mula sa Psalm 23 at gawing panalangin ito habang iniisip ang ating mentorship journey. Gawin ninyo ito pagkatapos ng session na ito. This prayer invites God's guidance and blessings on the mentorship journey while reinforcing themes of care, growth, and community. Thank you for joining me today. God bless us all.